from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed here. Oh, hello, Georgie. How's Floyd's of England doing these days? Uh, payments keep on the way they started this morning. The company will go broke. What's that mean? One of our old clients. Quite a character, by the oh, way. Oh, now, wait, George. For just once, give me a case involving some nice, ordinary, normal person. No, Johnny. First, but... it was that old fuss budget, Jediah Gillis. Yes, but now... Then big bad Michael Meany, who thought he owned half the state of Louisiana. Well, yes, I know, but compared to them, Durango Laramie Dalhart is as normal as they come. Durango what? Except for one thing, of course. The payment of his insurance premium this morning. What was the matter with it? $4,500, Johnny, in $100 bills. They're still here on my desk. Hundred dollar bills? You call this character normal? Listen, will you? Every one of these bills is counterfeit. Oh. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Floyd's of England, North American offices, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the funny money matter. Expense account item one, a dollar even, taxi from my apartment to George Reed's office. I found him sitting, staring grimly at a pile of paper money spread around on the top of his desk. Well, there they are, Johnny. $45, $100 bills, and every one of them as phony as I've ever seen. Look at them. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Whoever returned these out didn't even have sense enough to use the proper kind of ink. Yeah, it looks like he must have diluted it. Yeah. Have you ever seen such washed-out-looking money in all your life? <laughs> Good tough paper, though, just like the real McCoy. Yes, yeah, real crisp and new. But, Johnny, look at those colors. Even the black isn't really black. Yeah, yeah. You'd think they'd at least have tried to wrinkle them up a bit and dirty them. Yeah. This is the most obviously flagrant... What are you looking at, Johnny? Well, uh, this is unusual. For counterfeit, that is. What? Well, they've all been printed up with different serial numbers. See? Here. And here. Huh? How about that? Pretty smart. Funny, isn't it? The thing that usually makes this stuff easy to spot is the same number on all the bills. Sure. And whoever made these was clever enough to think of that. Had sense enough to use good paper, too. Uh -huh. But he certainly slipped up when it came to the color and quality of the ink. As for the press work... Well, I don't pretend to know much about phony money, George. Who needs to? In heaven's knows, I don't see too many hundred-dollar bills. But to me, this engraving looks just about perfect. That's just what I'm saying. Perfect plates, sense enough to change the numbers, good paper. Yet look at the result. Yeah. Has he ever tried anything like this before? What? Durango? Yeah. And just for the sake of the record, what is his real name? That's it. Durango Laramie Dalhart. Oh, I can't believe it. And the answer to your first question is no. Durango is as honest as the day is long. Well, maybe you mean he was. Well, maybe. But if so, I want to know why. There'd have to be a mighty good reason, believe me. Running out of dough is the best one I can think of. But he's always had plenty. After all, $4,500 to spend on insurance year after year. Well, just who is he? And where is he? He lives on a ranch in Oklahoma. What kind of a ranch? I don't know. But it must be awfully big. Where in Oklahoma? A place called Bum Spung. Bum Spung? Yes. Yeah. Oh, now, look, George, this whole thing is beginning to get a little too thick. Durango, bum, spung, Laramie, Dalhart, whatever it is. Look, counterfeit money is for the Secret Service for her, so why don't you just put in a phone call to them no. and let them carry the ball? No. Why? Because of Durango. I simply can't believe he'd deliberately hand over a lot of phony money. He's been paying on that policy for years. Always in cash? Always in cash. Crisp, new, legitimate $100 bill. Not till now. <laughs> Were you here when he left these? No. Now, look, Johnny, if somebody is trying to take him, it's up to us to protect him. Oh, that's a big if, George, from where I stand. Johnny, we've always tried to give more personal service to our clients than some of the other companies. Look, I want you to investigate this thing for us, without Durango's knowing, of course, on a fee plus expense account basis. Oh, an extra fee? That's not usual, George. With you, it is. 
You know as well as I do, the padding that goes on your expense account is plenty fee for anybody. Oh, George, you cut me to the quick. All right, where is Durang? Um, where is Mr. Dalhart now? Back in Bumspung, Oklahoma, or at least on the way. But I thought he just left this money this morning. Every year he follows the same pattern. Comes east for a fling. You know, New York and all the nightclubs, that sort of thing. Then, just before leaving, he drops in here, makes his premium payment, and is gone. So? George, I still think you should have called in the Secret Service. But I'll take this on for just one reason. What's that? I want to find out what kind of a place could ever deserve the name of Bum Spung. Since George had already arranged for plane travel as far as Enid, Oklahoma, item two is a mere 855 for incidentals along the way. I arrived and needed shortly after noon. Item three, 260 for lunch. Item four, $50 deposit on a rental car. And the owner of the Drive Your Own Agency wore a silly little smile as he gave me the directions to bum spunk. Anyway, I headed due north on Highway 81 across the Oklahoma flatland. Some 26 miles or so further on, after passing through Pond Creek and crossing the salt fork of the Arkansas River, I spotted a rather crude, weather-beaten sign indicating that the place I was looking for was somewhere up a dirt road to the left. Road? That's a laugh. And it twisted and turned for seemingly endless rough miles along the riverbank. I just about decided that bum spung was a bum steer when suddenly I almost ran into the gate of an old wooden fence surrounding some two or three acres of sandy ground. And there they were. A huge, ramshackle, unpainted building that passed for a house. An even more dilapidated affair, propped up with timbers that probably served as a barn. There were a couple of broken-down outbuildings, too. And on a small, irrigated plot in the back, two cows... Steers? Well, anyway, two rather sad-looking bovines munched on the faded grass. There were some decrepit-looking chickens, a mangy old dog. There was a horse of sorts in a small corral. The windmill, its whole tower sagged with fatigue, and the rudder on it slapped idly against the broken vein. But right next to it, in complete contrast, stood a spanking new Cadillac convertible. And on the other side of the house, hanging some flimsy pretties on a clothesline, uh, she was uh, maybe 23 or 4, a brunette, and wearing a pair of well-tailored white riding breeches and a tight flowered silk blouse. She was slim, and she was pretty, and had a couple of rosebuds tucked in her hair. Hi. And uh, about as out of place as anything I ever saw. You said hi. It was like seeing the vision of a goddess and... Hmm? Come on in. You swing aside that post that you left. It's what Durango called the gate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Durango, did you say? Don't tell me this is bum spunk. Sure is. Didn't you see the sign down the road? The vast acreage within this broken down fence is the cattle ranch of Durango Laramie Dalhart, who happens to be my uncle. I'm Carol Dalhart. Who are you? Why, uh, my name's Johnny Dollar. Dollar? That seems to me I've heard that somewhere. Oh. What are you doing out here? Oh, just, uh, driving around, you know, summer vacation. You look like a city man. I, uh, well, I was intrigued by that sign down the road. You know, curious about what bum spunk could mean. Bad water. Bad spring, so the Indians called it bum spunk. Oh. Drango liked the name, so he bought up these two acres and settled here. And this is all there is to his ranch? What's the matter with it? He liked it. But I'd had an idea. Well. Yeah? Uh, nothing. From what you've told me, I think I'd like to meet Durango. Is he around? You trying to kid me or something? I haven't told you anything about him. Now look, Johnny Dollar. Yeah, now look! Suddenly she turned to an old Colt 45, and as I ducked, she let go with it. Holy! I, I got him! I got him, see? She got him all right. A small really snake that had poked up out of a hole in the ground some 25 feet away, and she got him right through the head with both shots. Oh, God darn rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes? That looks to me like a poor old gopher snake. What's left of them? Oh, so what's the difference? Could have been a rattlesnake. Hey, you were plenty fast with that gun. Yeah, I gotta be. Or old Durango wouldn't have me on the place. No use for anybody to 
Hand me a couple of those clothes pins, will you? I got to get these things hung up. Yeah, sure. Here. You uh, said you're his niece. That's right. Only one left to take care of the old buzzard. You live here with him? Part of the time. Well, enough to look after him, make sure he don't get lonely, that he's got enough food in the house, that kind of thing. And I stick around when he goes out on the west coast or back east for a fling. That's where he is now. Yeah, and he's due back. Hand me that slip out of the laundry desk. Sure. Here you are. I take it that convertible's yours, huh? Yeah, that was my birthday present. Oh, your family must be pretty well healed. Family? Me and Durango, we're all that's left. Give me them stockings now. Sure. But certainly Durango... Why not? He gives me a new one every year. And this ranch is all he owns? Except for his money. Says he has a barrel of it. Well, he must have. Or else... Uh... Or else what? Uh, nothing. Go on with what you were saying. M more clothespins. Yeah, here. And when he kicks off, I get it all. And I can give up the filling station. Filling station? Well, you must have passed it. Just the side of Enid. Durango says a woman's no good unless she's got a job, so I got a filling station. Let somebody else run it for me, though, and Durango don't know the difference. Or at least he don't care. Main thing is, I'm around to keep him happy and give him somebody to cuss at now and then and... Say, why am I shooting off my face to you this way? I don't know, but don't stop. There. Them clothes will be dry in an hour, and if you're still here, you can help me take them down again. Okay. Carry that basket for me, and I'll give you a cool drink and pop. Hey, great. You say Durango's due back here, huh? Mm -hmm. Why well, don't save yourself time traveling by plane instead of train? I'll never... Johnny, if you're just around here on vacation, I'll eat my shirt. Why'd you come here? And don't give me any guff. All right, come on. Pour me that drink, and I'll tell you. Now, I'll tell you. You're here to pull something on... Oh! What's that? Son of a dog blasted... Blasted gopher. Oh, easy now. Easy. Don't you easy now, me. I busted my ankle. Oh, that's just oh. a little sprain. Here, arm over my shoulder. Okay. Okay. Dang fool that I was to kill that gopher snake back there. Johnny, it hurts. Then I'll carry you. You know. Oh, well, that's better. Hey... Oh, you got muscles. You know. Huh? What the? Well, take me over to the sofa. What's the matter, John? What stopped me was the inside of the ramshackle old house. Clean, modern, well furnished. Even the kitchen with its gleaming porcelain and electric range, huge refrigerator and freezer, modern in every way. Well, don't just stand there staring. Get some water, hot and cold for this ankle. While you're at it, pour us a drink at the bar over there in the corner. I could use a good, stiff snort. I did what I could to reduce the swelling in her ankle. But by the time I'd taped it up and she was snoozing comfortably on the sofa, it was getting dark. So I hired myself into the well-stocked kitchen to see what I could scratch up to eat. And I'll be honest about it, with this mighty attractive patient on my hands, I'd completely forgotten about my mission in these parts, the investigation of one Durango Laramie Dalhart. I wasn't allowed to forget it long, though, as I opened and was about to reach into the ample freezer. Stop right there, you. Huh? There's only one way to deal with a thieving, stealing, dirty varmint like you. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Put that thing down. And that, partner, is this way. Holy, no. Hey, no, no, you're out of your mind. No. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. A number of years ago, it was said that in spite of the large population of this planet, men and women remain the most inaccessible things on it. Today, we see this lack of understanding among peoples of the world reflected in headline stories. But it isn't because the people of the world are enemies. All people want to be friends. Long before the termination of World War II, Reverend Eugene Wood, a Methodist minister from Oceanside, California, went into a Scottsdale, Arizona camp where German prisoners of war were interned and offered his services to the imprisoned men. Among other things, Reverend Wood taught the men English, 
and he taught them about the United States of America. During the following years, after the men had been repatriated to their native Germany, nearly half of the internees corresponded frequently with Reverend Wood. Those men expressed a unique understanding of the people and the country of the United States of America. This great feeling of friendship and understanding prompted the minister to make a pilgrimage to Europe to seek out the men he had befriended in the prisoner of war camp in Arizona. This gesture on Reverend Wood's part gained him a fantastic welcome everywhere he went. In all the places he visited, he spread the gospel of love and friendship and had it returned to him. There were no enemies, only men with the love of freedom, the right of all men, everywhere. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Funny Money Matter. <laughs> Keep it in your pocket where it belongs. Uh, sure. Now, what was the big uh, idea? Well, whenever you bring one of these fancy boyfriends of yours around to my house, they got a right to have a little fun with them, ain't it? Fun? Is this your idea of fun? Your crazy, gall darn fun. Look what you did to the stove. You blowed it full nah, of holes. Yeah, the old wood stove would have held up. Here, buy yourself another one. There's four. Five hundred nice new dollars. Hey, wait, let now, me see Now, what about those. that window and the jars on the shelf? Yeah, I'm okay here. <laughs> you should have saw him when I started throwing that lid all around oh, him. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. Here, Johnny, let me wipe off some of that jam that fell on your head. Johnny? Johnny who? Johnny Dollar. And I take it you're Durango Laramie Dollhart. Yeah, I sure am. Fastest shot in the country, too. My pa learned how in Durango, my ma learned how in Laramie, and I'm better than both of them was. Only thing is, I get no chance to show off no more. Durango, you crazy idiot. What's the idea? Oh, she... uh, no harm, man. No harm. Yeah. Yeah. Take a slug of this. You forget all about it. I'll get a glass. Glass, a man drinks out of the bottle. Go ahead, Johnny. Oh, well, thanks. Bad enough a he-man has to live around all this feminine fripsy and lace curtains and rugs all over the floor You know stuff. that blame well you like the way I fixed up this old dump of yours, Durango. Mm, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Look, you two. Yeah, you know dang well a man gets tired just sitting around no matter how party pretty it is. Why else do you suppose I've got to get away every now and then to San Francisco or New York or some of them places where they got some noise and excitement? Is that right, Johnny Dollar? Just leave him out of it. Why? What's he doing here, anyhow? Well? Well, uh... Well, Durango, I, I'll uh... tell you why. Because he's just driving around on his vacation, and he happened to get to the end of the road, and I made him come in. That's why. Thanks, girl. You got any objections? Nah, I'll say this. He's got a lot more get-up and guts than most of the boys you bring around here. That larap on the chin he give me. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry about that, Durango. Sorry for what? Because you didn't act like some of them lily-livered kids she brings around run for home? No, sir, boy, you are all right. You just... Here, what the Sam Hill you got on your foot? Well, it's high time you noticed. Well, what happened to it? I like to have busted my ankle and I go for hold, and if it hadn't been for Johnny, I'd still be laying out in the yard howling with pain. Yeah. Me, I'd seen that happen. I thought she'd broke her leg. I'd liable to took her out and shot her. <laughs> but Johnny boy, you done a real good job on my little ticket. Here, honey. I have to get back on the sofa. No, now, that's Johnny. He's hmm. a lot gentler. And besides, well, I kind of like him. <laughs> you hear that, Johnny? You better look out when a pretty girl starts talking to you like that. You're sure fixing to get lassoed and thrown. Well, I can think of a lot worse than... Durango, you just shut up and fix us up some vittles. We're hungry. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. No sooner I get back here and some woman starts giving me orders. Take it easy now, girl. Oh, I don't need help. I'm feeling fine now. I just wanted to talk to you. Now you should have stayed on that sofa. 
out and missed all the fun? Fun? You too? Get out. Oh, thanks. Hey, sit beside me, Johnny. Well, sure. Why not? Ah, now, none of that mush stuff. That isn't what I meant. No, I can't see as I'd mind it with you, Johnny. Well, now... If that isn't an invitation, I... Hey, it's a nice date and a couple of chops, maybe some pancakes and uh, beans to fill you up, be all right? Just make it good and take your time. Or shall I do it? Yeah, <laughs> woman, I can cook better than you any time. Oh. <laughs> uh, well? Johnny, before you start that... What's the matter with some lights in there, you kids? It's getting dark. Oh. Just mind your own affairs. And I warn you, Johnny, you better watch out for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'll risk it, Durango. You don't uh, want the light, do you, Joe? You know what I want? Mm-hmm. What? I don't know why you come out here to bum spun. Can't I wait? Darn, I wish you got somewhere else to go. It's going to be pretty late by the time we've met. Well, I might as well bunk here tonight. Got plenty of room. What do you say? Johnny? Uh, sure, Durango. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Now, uh, Carol. You haven't answered my question, Johnny. Mm, tomorrow. I'll, I'll tell you tomorrow when we can be alone. Aren't we alone now? Oh, not as much as I wish we were. Mm. You mighty cute guy, Johnny. Oh. You don't know me, Carol. I'm really just an old wolf. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't... Ooh. Hmm? Just one of the roses fell out of my hair. There it is. Mm. With buds of roses in her hair and kisses on her mouth. What's that? Pretty? Just a line from an old boy. I have the roses in my hair. What about the rest? Don't you find out. Hmm? You kids want to bail down on the jump while you're waiting? Oh, for... oh, why don't you tend to your cooking? Hmm? Johnny? Ah, that Durango, he certainly puts together a meal in a hurry. Too much of a hurry. The meal itself, enough for an army. And to see him pack it away, you'd think he'd been out on the range for years. Yes, sir. Nothing like coming home to give you an appetite. Here, scoop yourself up some more beans, Johnny. I still Not... hadn't made any progress in my investigation and encouraged him to talk about himself. He did, willingly. And how much of it was true was something else again. Said he'd left his father's little farm in Colorado to hunt for gold. Said he'd found it, too, a lot of it. Claimed he'd used that money exploring for oil, wildcatting. That everything he'd touched had turned to money. That he'd made and banked so much he could never spend it all. That's why he'd go on those flings to San Francisco and New York, just to get rid of it. Then come back here to this little plot of ground and rest up for the next excursion to the big city. His only regret was he was too old to make the new West like the old West. Yes, sir. If I was 20 years younger, I'd ride a horse into Dodge City and show all them law and order. I'd show them just exactly how it was in the old days. Like I read about in them magazines. But if all this were true, why the counterfeit money? Those phony, washed-out hundred-dollar bills I'd seen on George Reed's desk. The bed in the guest room was as comfortable as my own, but I couldn't get to sleep, fortunately. For long after the house was dark, it must have been close to midnight, I heard the door of Durango's room open, heard him sneak out of the house the back way. Quickly, as quietly as I could, I slipped on trousers and shoes, took along my gun, and went after him. From the back porch, I could see that there was a light on in one of the small outbuildings. With my ear pressed tightly to the side of the little shack, I could hear it only too plainly. The printing press on which Durango was turning out the phony money. No question about it. And I was sorry. Kind of began to like the old character. To say nothing of his beautiful... Johnny! Huh? Carol! What are you doing out here? If it's a walk in the moonlight you want, why didn't Jack Carol. come with you? I... Carol, listen. I'll lay my cards right on the table. What I really came to this place for was to find out... Well... Is right here inside this little shack. Oh, no. And now that I've found out, I've... Oh, Johnny, you'll break his heart. He thinks nobody knows about this. Oh, of course he does. He's been doing it ever since... 
And he thinks that even I don't know about it. Oh, Bert. Oh, Johnny, please, you'll spoil everything. Why not? It's about time, isn't it? But he means no harm to anybody. What do you mean, no harm? Are you kidding? Or maybe you're in this whole thing with him. Are you? Oh, no, but I don't see what difference it would make. Johnny, Johnny, baby, don't... Oh, don't, don't pull that stuff. It's time for a showdown. Harry, what's the racket? What's going on? Huh? Oh, Snoop, huh? Why, you ornery low-down sneaking coyote. All right, all right, Durango. Just cut it and stand where you are. Huh? Well, what are you doing with that gun? I only hope you won't make it necessary for me to use it. Johnny. Open up that door, Durango. I want to see what you've got inside there. Go ahead, now open it. Yeah. Now, look, son, there, there, there ain't no harm in what I'm doing in there. No harm? That seems to be a pat phrase around here. Well, it's just that I... Well, ever since I made my pile, everywhere I'd go, I'd spend a lot of money. So you I, told me at great length. Always. Uh, maybe it was sort of showing off a bit, but when I'd draw it out of the bank, I'd make them give me brand new money. And, you know, to impress the folks. Like a big shot up in Hartford where I pay my insurance for Carol here every year. In brand new $100 bills, supposedly. That's right, and no supposedly. But this last insurance payment to Georgia. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... Johnny, it wasn't my fault. The bank didn't have some nice new ones for me. And they couldn't get them in time either. So I I had to... Well, this was the next best. Oh, that's all I can Johnny, Sorry. please. Open that door. Oh, God. I kept hoping nobody would find it. Come out. on. Open it. Okay. There you are. What under the... That's the washing machine what? there. And that's the soap and plenty of strong bleach and the starch to make them nice and crisp. Oh, no. And that there is the ironing board where I press them out real <laughs> nice and flat. They'll never believe it. But it, it does make them look real pretty and new. <laughs> Honest, Johnny, I, I, I didn't think there was no harm in it. <laughs> Well, there you have it, George. Full report on the funny money that turned out to be only cleaned up a bit. And the next time, call in the Secret Service, will you? No, no, I, I didn't mean that. Just don't question the charges on this account for the extra week I've spent out here. If you can see this pretty little Carol... Oh, that Carol. And if I ever get enough money, so help me, I think I'll retire to bum-spung Oklahoma. Expense account total, including incidentals, and the trip back to Hartford, one seventy-one twenty-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, well, just remember one thing: that old saying about a cat having nine lives. And be sure to join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, G. Stanley Jones, and John McIntyre. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. Radio and Television Service.